Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Kingston Seymour. Kingston Seymour is situated between Clevedon and Weston. It's a big, large, muddy bay, so we're fishing onto a big mud flat out here. Our target species today, or the species we regularly get here at Kingston Seymour, are formback rays, bass, cod, conger eels, silver eels, and maybe the odd, maybe the odd flounder and uh, Help me out here. What's it called? So, so there we are. We got there eventually. Running a little bit late, so I've got one rod out before I started filming. I'm about to set up my other rod. So the rod is any fish anywhere, six and bait, Mark II modifier rod with a pen casting special on both setups. So both setups are exactly the same because I'm pompy like that. And yeah. So let's get this everyone set up today. I'm just going to be using pulley rigs, maybe a pulley dropper. Just get that bait right on the bottom and hopefully target either a cod or a bass, maybe a form bat ready today. They're the three species I think we've got a good chance of catching today. But yeah, let's get them set up, get another bait out there, and hopefully talk to you about how we get here, more of what is out there, a little bit of history of the place as well, maybe, and yeah, hopefully catch some fish. Right, second rod then. This one we've got a nice black lug sausage on it. This will hopefully target the bass. Yeah, so nice black lug, black lug sausage on the other one. I'll go through the rigs in detail in a minute. But he's ready to go out. Take the ratchet off. And let's smash him out there. The other rod's got a whole squid on, so I'm fishing black lug and squid today. My bait. I'm not going to lie to you, it's not the best, it's freezer bait, it's been in there for a while, but if you catch a fish, it makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? So I'm going to chuck this one a little bit further out that way, I think. Two seconds. That's the problem with fishing this mark. It is so exposed, it's always bloody windy. Fucking lucky my coat was there, eh? All right, like I said then, that's both rods out. We'll leave them for about 20 minutes and then we'll get some fresh bait on them, chuck them back out. Meanwhile, I will talk you through the tactics and everything I do. So the rig I'm using is just a really simple pulley rig. The idea of a pulley rig is the weight's on the bottom, the fish picks up the bait and it can pull away, leaving no tension on the rig body. So it feels like it's swimming away with the bait. And then when the swivel hits the weight, it connects with the fish, hopefully hooking it up. And when you strike into it, obviously securing that hook placement. I thought it was a bite then, but it was a wind. So, Start at the bottom weight end then. Six ounce weight, down to a Gemini splash down rig. A bead. So I just use a swivel, you can use the pulley beads, whatever, but to me, it's exactly the same thing. I like to use two beads up where my little quick clip is, where I join on my trace, just so it stands proud. I don't know if I can try and show you that. It just keeps that trace away from your rig body, hopefully pretending tangles. 80 pound hook trace down to a Frio octopus hook as a panel. And then this is a Frio. Ideally I like to use a 40 specimen extra hook. Yeah, they do really well for me and they last a while as well. I was reading a comment the other day, some people chuck their hooks out every session. I don't, I use them maybe two or three sessions. 
to me. They're, the hooks aren't cheap anymore. They are quite expensive, so I do like to reuse them. And as for my rig bodies, I will use them as much as I can. That is why I use a hundred pound, just for more resistance against the rocks and just the general strains of fishing. So that is my really simple pulley rig. I say I do use pulley droppers as well in some places and in the summer I'll be using up and over rigs as well to really target the rays. So that is my rig. And I guess I'll show you some baiting up. So hooking up my squid then. Sometimes I use a baiting needle, but I'm being lazy today. So hook it through the top of the squid. Pull your panel down, give you a bit more room. Basically, I just like to thread it through and back through two or three times. So that's the second one. And what I aim to do, I want my hook point coming out about here. So where that knot is, is when I want it to go back in. So that'll be my last, my last thread through. So just hook it through once. Thread them up to the top of the squid. Come out near the top, push them through, pull your line through. And that way, it's nice and neat. And it's not gonna cause the bait to bend or in any way. Put your panel through. It's properly raining now. Would you believe it in England? And then bait, there's a bit of elastic. Just make sure your hook is nice and proud. I like to put plenty in and around the hook. Dare the hook. And that is it, a squid bait ready for the Bristol Channel. Well, it's been a little while since uh, I cast the first rods out. We had a massive rainstorm coming, so I just sat there and sat it out. But let's change the rod, the first rod, the, the whole squid. Time to change the bait on that. Let me come down the mud. Another horrible day here. The thing is about this rock mark, it's so bloody exposed. It's constantly windy. So if you are gonna come down here, make sure it's a nice day. It's just a bit more enjoyable. Yeah, whole squid, not even touched. So a little bit more about Kingston Seymour. This bay is what you call Woodspring Bray. To my left, like I said, you've got Western. To my right, we've got Clevedon. To my left is St. Thomas's Head. That used to be a war, like lookout post, military sort of grounds during the Second World War. And out here, you've got two wrecks. They're quite a few hundred meters off. You can see them at low tide. One of them's called SSS Fernwood, and one of them's called SSS Staghound. There used to be coal boats back in the war, uh, during the war, well, before the war. And uh, during an attack down in Dartmouth, I think it was Staghound that got sunk. And it was full of coal, anyway. After that, they towed them up here after they um, brought them back up. And uh, they're situated out there, and they were used for target practice from the MOD or St. Thomas's Head. So if you look out here at low tide as well, you can still see big craters where they used to, obviously, the ammunition used to come along and use target practice for them. Quite a bit of, quite a little bit of, a ah, little bit of interest in history there. Just still loads of stuff left over from the war. If you do walk on the MOD, you can see all the, the lookout posts and all the buildings and stuff left from the war. So it is worth a little walk out there. And the fishing over there is quite good as well. So today we're fishing a 12 meter tide. I don't really like to fish it on any small tides here. You just haven't got the volume of water really. Um, 
Yeah, I got here about two hours before and it was just coming up. So like you could get here at two hour two and a half hours before really. Um, yeah, just to allow yourself to get a bit more time set up and a little bit more time fishing as well. So Yeah, that's it here really on the uh, old history front, that's all I've really got. But we've had no bites, we've just had a massive squall come through, a load of rain, a load of wind. So I've sort of like hunkered down, waited for that to go. Now we're in a little bit, a little bit of sunshine. We're coming up to the top of tide as well now, we've probably got another 20 minutes until high tide. I expect hopefully the fish to stick around sort of an hour after high. It very quickly pushes off this bank so we ain't got much longer left. Come on, we've got, to, we've got to have a fish, we've got to have a fish, come on. Yet again, the rod tips are very, very still here on the Bristol Channel. I'm putting out loads of fresh bait, but yet again, very, very still. That tide's really starting to go out now. So what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fish it here for another hour until the mud starts to show. And then I think I'm gonna move to another mark. I've not decided where yet, um, I got to go to work at four o'clock today, but hopefully we can squeeze in another mark just to fish it down. Let me have a little think, and then um, yeah, I'll let you guys know where we're going to go next. So it's going to be a little bit of a day session today. Sorry, I keep like sniffing. I've been on skiing all day. I've got a bit of a cold coming on. And it's not exactly warm today either. But yeah, I think I'm going to head towards even around Cleveland on the Porter's Head area to fish it down. Maybe Lady Bay on the first point, we'll see. But yeah, no action at all. Bloody rubbish. There are, the, the, the fish in the channel is getting a little bit better. I see more and more catch reports. Just the fish seem to be in very small pockets very isolated pockets as well but we're still not having the congers and numbers like we usually do we're in like the middle of march now i know february was a very 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 bad time for fishing anyway but it's just never been like this before still pick up your bits and pieces but we can keep trying keep trying it'd be boring if we cut all the time wouldn't it Right, I'm going to start bringing in the rods now. Um, the tide is pushing out. It won't be long until all this is mud and then, yeah, we're pretty much out of water. Haven't decided where I'm going to go yet. I'm going to get back in the car, regroup, and then I'll see you on another rock mark somewhere else towards Porter's Head. So, yeah, let's get packed up and uh, I'll see you out there. Right, as you can see, I've made it to my next mark then, here in Redcliffe Bay, Porter's Head. It's a completely different day. The sun's out all the way around. Apart from over there, it's a bit cloudy and over Wales, but it's a beautiful day now. Bit of a wind, but here we go. First whole squid coming out. This is the first time I've actually fished. I've fished this mark before, but actually over here. Usually I fish on the pipe over there. So I thought I'd try it out. My feeling is it's gonna be pretty snaggy out there. But there's a nice tide run, so I'm gonna whack out as far as I can get it into that tide and hopefully in front of a fish's mouth. That's the plan anyway, it sounds good on paper. It's a little bit uh, uneasy underfoot here. So a little bit of a strong westerly wind blowing right up the channel. We get as many yards as possible. Not the best caster in the world, as a lot of you can probably tell. But let's get him out there. Find a good foothold. Not the best cast. We'll let, we'll let him find a nice little gully to lie in.
And that is rod number one in the water. We are fishing. Right, rod one, we'll get the one set up. Um, the guys that were fishing a little bit further down from me earlier, they gave me some ragworm, so I'm gonna chuck a bit of ragworm out, mix things up. You never know, something a little bit smaller might be out there, but at least it's a fish. So I'll get that one baited up, watch me cast it out, and then continue fishing. Right, second rod set up, just free ragworm on this one then. Get a little bit more distance out there, hopefully, than the big squid bait, a bit more aerodynamic. We're gonna cast off of this ledge here, I think. Put a little separation between the two rods. Whoa! Right, that's it then, both rods out. We're fishing, ragworm and squid baits, and a bit of tide. What could go wrong? There is a bit of a back eddy here as well. I don't even see the tide line there, and there's a back eddy in this middle bit. See how we get on with that. I say it's big tides today, well, slightly up, bigger than average tides, sort of 12 meters, 12.5 meters today. So there's a bit of tide running through there, so we might pick up a lot, of, a lot of crap. We're coming on the back of some of the biggest tides of the year, 14.5 14, 14. metres, something like that. Really big tides, so I'm expecting a lot of crap in the water. Hopefully that's drawn some fish up with it. But yeah, fingers crossed it's better than this morning session. Second bait going out there, and I've brought in the whole squid, just put on a black squid and lug bait. Black squid, black lug, and squid bait. Little cocktail. Let's get him out there on that side. That wind is blowing pretty strong. It is rattling the rods quite a lot, so it is hard to see sometimes, but uh, that tide's gone out quite a bit now, exposing a little bit more mud and weed. Down to my right hand side, there's Black Nord Point. So, all the way, so from Black Nord Point coming down this way. It's loads and loads of sand coral, sand banks, and stuff like that. So maybe out there is sort of the same. As we get further and further out, we'll hit the sand coral. Some snaggier ground. Right, what I'm going to do then, I'm going to bring in all the stuff back down there, back towards the water level. I like it up here, though. But yeah, we'll go down, chase the water down for a couple more hours, and then I got to go to work, so we're back out on that. Bloody night shifts. All right, let's go that stuff down there. Whoa. Right, 20 minutes to go then before I've got to go. So, last little ditch effort, whole squid, get a bit of French, French set? Can't speak today. A fresh scent in the water. Let's get them out there, man. I've gone round and I've had a little look for, um, see if we can find some crabs. Can't find a single one. Not a single crab in sight. I reckon that is our problem. If the food ain't here, the fish aren't gonna be either.
lots of sand on this mark as well recently, especially with the big tides. I think we would have uh, we would have all sort of gone. Blame Hinkley, shall we? And they're dumping of fucking mud up on Battery Point. 800,000 tonnes. That ain't no sandcastle. But yeah, uh, right, that's it. Fingers crossed for me then. Last 20 minutes, try and winkle out ourselves a fish. I'm not a deep hole. Come on. Right, that's all I've got time for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Again, we have blanked, but it is just, my videos are just open and honest, and this is what the Bristol Channel's fishing like at the moment. I'm gonna get these two rods in now, make my way back home, and I'll see you on the next one.